In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a technique that I've recently been working with and that's hybrid HDR imaging. What I've done is taken certain elements of my image, converted them into HDR elements and then blended them back to the original image. Right now on the screen, you can see that I've got my image here where I've converted the stream into an HDR image, but I've left the rest of the image alone. Here is the image without the HDR overlay, and here is the image with the HDR overlay. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how I created this. One of the things that I like about this technique is it causes the viewer to really take a double take look at your image to kind of try to figure out what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to bring my layers palette here into view because here is my HDR layer that I incorporated into this image. I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to tap the delete key on the keyboard since I'm using Photoshop CS5 and let's just go ahead and start this tutorial as we would from the beginning. I'm going to go up to my image menu and I'm going to tell it to duplicate the background layer here and I'm going to say OK and it's going to give us a whole new layer and I'll go ahead and expand the size here. Now what I want to do is I want to do some HDR toning on this image. So I'm gonna come up under the image menu, I'm gonna drop down to adjustments, and then we're gonna select HDR toning. And when we do, we're gonna get our HDR toning map, and it's gonna come in, and we're gonna be able to go to work on this. Let me kind of move a few things into position. I'm gonna first start really moving the strength up quite a bit, and also the radius up quite a bit just to get some of those tones so they're not quite so wild. I'm gonna lower the exposure just a little bit here. I wanna crank up my details quite a bit. And what I wanna do is really start boosting and working on the vibrance and the saturation. I really want this water to stand out. Also, if you don't see your toning curve and histogram, you can go ahead and click the drop down box. And I'm just going to come in here and start working on this just a little bit. I'm not getting too crazy with it, but I want to really start getting quite a bit of contrast going on with this as we start to develop it. And you can really see as we focus in on this river area, this is really making an interesting change to the image. We do have a preview checkbox so I can look at before and after and you can just see how flat the image is, but now how it really comes alive once we place a little bit of HDR toning to it. Now once we have the HDR toned image the way that we want, and again I'm only focusing here on the river, I'm not paying attention to any other portion of the image, I'm going to go ahead and click and say OK. Now it's going to take Photoshop just a little bit of time to convert this HDR image that we have just tone mapped. And once we get the HDR image, we're then going to grab a selection tool. I'm going to grab the lasso tool and I'm just going to make a quick selection around the river because what we want to do is separate that river from the rest of the image and then we're going to go ahead and bring it in and drop it on top of our original image as a new layer. Okay, and now that Photoshop has tone mapped our image, I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the lasso tool and I'm gonna make a rough selection around the river. And I'm not gonna worry too much about it because we're gonna fine tune and feather this as we bring it into our other image. So I'm just gonna surround some of these water areas here probably grab way too much of the area, but I'd rather have too much of it than too little of it as we feather it. And I'll just meet up, and now I've got my selection going on around the river. Then what I'm gonna do is just do a Control J or Command J so that I can put that layer all by itself on its own layer. I'm gonna grab the Move tool. Now I happen to be in Photoshop CS5, as I mentioned earlier. This will also work in CS4, but what I wanna do is actually drag this layer on top of our original layer over here. So what I'm gonna do is, with the Move tool, 
in the middle of the image here, I'm going to grab and drag and hover over our image. And I need to make sure that I center this perfectly on the image. And to do that, all I need to do is hold the shift key down and it's going to automatically place that image right where we need it to go. Now it's obviously out of place a little bit because we have a pretty rough selection going on and we need to kind of feather and trim and blend this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my control key down if I'm in Windows or command key if I'm on the Mac and I'm just going to click here on layer one's thumbnail and that's going to select it. And then I'm going to click at the bottom of the layers palette, the layer mask, and that's going to go ahead and give me a layer mask. Then I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to make sure that I've got my feather, at least the hardness here on the brush set to zero. And what I'm going to do is making sure that I'm painting with black in the layer mask of layer number one. I'm just going to come and trim out these areas that I don't want to have exposed in the image and some of these areas and if I make a mistake like I just did there I'm just going to tap the X key to paint with white paint that area back in Then I'm just going to kind of come in and paint out some of these areas that I don't want to have exposed what I want to do is really draw people's attention here to the river and the blue water and some of the other effects that I did when we HDR toned it and even to come into these rocks here and kind of mask them out just a little bit but you get the point here where now we've got this pretty interesting look where we had a really flat area and image and we've taken part of the image it's almost like colorizing it almost where we took our base image and desaturated it and then colorized a specific area well instead of doing that we're using HDR toning techniques to be able to bring out some characteristics in our image Oh, I want to put one other effect on this image now that we kind of have this combination going on. I'm going to bring into view my actions palette and I'm going to pick from the TDPC action set number five. We've got some artistic actions that we can run on our image. I'm going to come down and I'm going to pick the artist and I'm going to go ahead and click play. And it's going to ask me if I want to flatten the image. Now it's made a copy of this image, so don't worry about ruining your original image. But it's going to go ahead and put the effect on it. It's also going to tell us that if we need to make a change, we can adjust the opacity of the group if it's too much. And I like a lot of things that are going on here with the image. The only thing I don't like is the way that the sky got treated. But if we really start looking at some of the water, I really like what's happening here. So I'm just going to add a quick layer mask to the group. And I'm going to paint with black. And I'm just going to go ahead and fix that sky real quick. And we'll just drag this up here. And now we can look. So here was our image before we ran the artist. And here is our image afterwards. And it just put a really nice touch, especially on the HDR portion of our image. So if you happen to have the TDPC action set number five, you might start experimenting with that as well as you create your hybrid HDR images.